Yes. Listen. Hello and welcome to NVC IGN's Nintendo Podcast. Today, a ton of new games were just announced during the Indie World Showcase, and IGN just announced our game of the year for Wait. Nintendo and overall. And today, I'm joined by Brian Altano. Brap, brap. Pear Schneider. The jingle is back. And Tom Marks. Hello. And I'm your host, Casey DeFritis. So let's start it off with game of the year. Okay. Just to get the big, the big, I guess it's not really an elephant in the room. I mean, we talked about Something this a won. lot before. <laughs> but Tom, what were the nominees for the Nintendo game of the year? For Nintendo game of the year, the nominees were Fire Emblem Three Houses, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Luigi's Mansion 3, Super Mario Maker 2, and The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. What a, that's a pretty good year. That's, that's a yeah, great that's year. A that's really a heck of a year. first party lineup too. Yeah. I went back and looked at our list from last year, from 2018, and it was still a really good year, right? But like the first party titles were... It was, it was basically just Pokemon and Smash. Pretty and, much. And comparatively to Xbox and PlayStation, this is really, really strong showing from Nintendo. Nintendo yeah. killed yeah. it this yeah. year. Yeah. Three yeah. of those, three of those job, games, Nintendo. Yeah, three of those games were in our overall Game of the Year nominees as yeah. well, whereas mm -hmm. there were no there were no uh, PlayStation 4 or Xbox One exclusives in our nominees for oh, wow. Game of the Year overall. If this is like essentially the middle of the Switch's life cycle, then it's pretty much kicking butt yeah. yeah like it's that's a that's a nice center point well we, we're like in year that. three if the life cycle of this machine is more like the handhelds like ds and Game Boy, it'll be way longer yes mm -hmm. the midpoint is like in 10 years or something <laughs> oh, yeah <gosh>. but then <laughs> that's towards the last seven to ten years that's when they send out the kirby's yeah. and the mario and luigi's gabby yeah, inside nice. inside Bowser's or whatever. Well, so what do you? <laughs> are we gonna tell people what won? Yeah, we're gonna tell everyone what won. So we discussed this extensively on a previous show, Brian. I don't think you were there because I think you might have had a different opinion. What? But I think most of us settled on Fire Emblem Three Houses probably being our pick. For In your face, game of the Brian year. Altano. And whatever. that is the one that won. So IGN has crowned Fire Emblem Three Houses as Nintendo Game of the Year, and. It also won in People's Choice Awards for Nintendo Switch game as well, Unanimous. with 34% yeah. of the vote uh, choosing Fire Emblem 3. Look Houses. at that, totally in tune with our community. I, th I think, I mean, honestly, Luigi's Mansion, Link's Awakening, Pokemon, Mario Maker, they're all really good game. Like, if I had to score them, they for me, they're all 8 Point five to nine point five range game, mm -hmm. and then yeah. uh, we also, you know, a couple. We saw when we put out our nominations, we saw a couple people being like, "Well, where's Astral Chain? We only do five nominees." Right. And I think if you ask around the office, probably Astral Chain would be number six in that yep. list, right? Right, yeah. right, right. Uh, it was it, Nintendo just had a really, really good exclusive year. Even you know, I didn't give it a huge glowing explosive review but like even yoshi's crafted world was oh, like yeah. a fun game it was a that good was this game year this too. year i think mm -hmm. there's something like 14 switch exclusives this year oh man it's crazy yeah i just i just talked about it this is what happens when you don't support two systems at the same time yeah right <laughs> well this was you put it that way i i think that if you look at or listen mm -hmm. to nvc episodes from a year ago there was probably in the same way we're looking at 2020 right now there was hopefulness but also like a little bit of maybe paranoia or skepticism about how the year would roll out a year without like a big flagship 3d zelda or a big 3d mario game uh ultimately gave a lot of room to move around in for some of the slightly smaller ips in their stable and i'm, I'm pretty happy about that um, Fire Emblem's like not really my thing, but I think it's absolutely deserving to win. Uh, Link's Awakening, obviously, for me, is my favorite Nintendo exclusive this yeah. year, but that's it's impossible to separate well, me from nostalgia yeah. on that I, one. I feel like, I mean, the thing for me that I love about Fire Emblem is that Zach was such a kind of like he said oh i'll check it out but i'm not going to play it much and then he ended up completely getting lost in that game yeah. and loving it and which is to really me cool. that that just shows that fire emblem's taken another step from being what, what really used to be this niche turn-based strategy game to be something much much bigger and i think we'll see at the end of the year i think the sales are going to be really really impressive for that title and I'm just hopeful that this franchise will continue and continue to kind of experiment. Like this was a step in the right direction. Splitting the game into multiple copies that you had to buy like Pokemon was not a step in the right direction. Right. Inside, yeah. As nice as it was to get that many games, like there's just so much in 
in three houses. You can mm -hmm. play it again and get a different story. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think like Zach's story with this game is sort of symbolic of the larger story that's happening with a lot of people with Switch. Yeah. Um, you have lapsed gamers, you have new gamers, and you have people that maybe never would have bought one of these things before are going in and connecting with these franchises for the first time. And that's really awesome. And I think that was the hope with a game like Mario and Rabbits too, right? That yeah. That's a turn-based strategy game. And I think Ubisoft was hoping that more people would pick it up with you know the Mario franchise sadly you know it didn't get quite that huge mainstream success and that was a really good game too it did pretty well yeah yeah that that sold that's i think that's the, the or at least for a while was the best selling third party switch game yeah maybe we'll get a second one next year but i still want a mario <laughs> rpg in that engine yeah also shout out to uh our best platformer of 2019 super mario maker 2 oh hey yeah so that also won another major award from us i feel like best platformer should just be sponsored by nintendo at this point like that category <laughs> brought to you by nintendo because they are they kind of impossible to unseat in that category despite some really good indie games coming out now in the platformer category mm -hmm. they still kind of own it so super mario maker is just ridiculous yeah the amount was, of stuff you can do with this. It was also cool that, like, just as we were having these conversations about Game of the Year, to have an excuse to revisit that game and yep. get a Master Sword, which I did over the weekend. <laughs> so we should mention, though, the overall winner. The overall winner was Control. Yeah. From and Sam Lake and, and Friends. Mm -hmm. Remedy. Yes. And I know this was a game that Janet really liked and ch yep. championed, and but our People's Choice Award was to Death Stranding. Yep. Which was a very divisive title here in the office. Um, it was one of those games that I actually haven't been able to put that much time into it. I played like three hours and I feel yeah. like I did not get into the even the meat of what that game is. Yeah. I dig it. It's sci-fi Animal Crossing. They make okay. it, you do chores <laughs> and carrying around packages. I, I like it. It's it's kind of kooky, but I, I will admit that I can see a lot of people being put off by the game and how repetitive it becomes after a while. But like, I think that's really cool. Um, I, I forgot what the final tally was, but way over 50,000 people voted um, for their um, Game of the Year in the, in the Reader's Choice Awards. Uh, and... Uh, you know, like uh, some years, a Nintendo game will win both Reader's Choice and our editorial pick across platforms. Mm -hmm. But this year, you know, the uh, while we had multiple nominees, Fire Emblem didn't quite make it into the into the top spot. It was, um, I mean, I think we knew a few months ago, at least even probably halfway through the year, that this was going to be a really interesting yeah. year, especially for Game of the Year stuff. Because the way it kind of shook out was that there was a couple of front runners, but then a bunch of games that were also immensely popular and tied with a sort of, you know, third place voting area. The yeah. Resident Evil 2 remake was very, very close. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very close runner up. And on, I think it's just there weren't very many stand out like masterpiece games this year like there right. were last year like god of war and um red dead came out in the same yeah. year and those like were that the level of runners. polish like fallen order was really mm -hmm. good but it's also rough around the edges yeah right? like well, well, performance well, issues and bugs and same stuff. with things here's, awakening here's yeah. a good example and obviously reviews are an individual's opinion but last year in 2018 we gave three tens and in 2019 we and the year's not done but haven't given any Right. So that's, I, I think, a really good example. That said, we gave like at least half a dozen, I think, more games in 9 5, right? Yeah. Like this has a, this was exactly what you said, right? It was a really good year of just great games, really good games across the board, but nothing that really just blew the roof off and stood out to everyone. Right. Right. Yeah. When I, I tweeted out my like favorite games this year list and I was kind of sort of taken aback at, the variety, not only in genre, but in mm -hmm. scale. Mm -hmm. Like some of these games were incredibly tiny little indie games and others were massive AAA action platforming games and stuff like yeah. that. And it's really cool to see that there, and then some VR games in there too. It's really cool to see that just a mix of all that stuff yeah. this year. It'll yep. be interesting next year, you know, like like the kind of game of the year award darlings like Nintendo's Mario or Zelda team were absent as were Rockstar and, you know, Naughty Dog and stuff. So it's going to be interesting next year with the new consoles and a new Halo and a Last of Us. And we'll see what we get from Nintendo. Well, with new consoles, you always see uh, teams are sort of like figuring stuff out. Mm -hmm. And there's that sort of like those hiccups that happen around launch. But Nintendo is going to be really in the thick of solidifying the Switch as one of the best yep. platforms ever made. But we're also going to get like their flagship title next year for as we know right now is Animal Crossing, which has histor historically never really won Game of the Year. It's sort of like Death Stranding, and then it's a pretty divisive game. Well, it's a strand strand genre. It game. It is. It so, is the yeah. original strand yeah. genre game, yeah. Yeah. and I love it. Mm -hmm. I love Animal mm -hmm. Crossing. So that I'm really excited me. for next year. Oh, that hurt me. That hurt me to hear. <laughs> I do want to give one shout out to our best strategy of the, um, winner, 
which is Slay the Spire. Yay! Which uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I, just, I, I could tell something was up. You're like... I get to say the slay the spy. I get to say one of my favorite game names. Um, John Borba, who uh, is a, on our video team here, is in the corner, running control on the show and also fist pumping at the, mm-hmm. at <laughs> the, the phrase "slay the spy." Yes. <laughs> well, the the strategy category, strategy slash tactics, was the category this year, and it was kind of stacked with Nintendo or games that were on Switch or sh- uh, shined on Switch a little bit because it was uh, slay the spire. Total War Three Kingdoms was a PC exclusive, yep. and then uh, Three Houses, SteamWorld Quest, and Wargroove. Wargroove, mm-hmm. and yeah. Wargroove launched at the same time on a couple spots, but SteamWorld Quest was initially a Switch exclusive, at least to start, um, and Three Houses, of course, is Three Houses. So it was, yeah, it was it was a really good strategy year for, for the Switch. Yeah, I think it's yeah. that's a fantastic platformer for stuff like that i mean a platform for stuff like that i I, like some of my fondest memories of strategy games were playing on the gba and the ds yeah Mm -hmm. you know if you go back to stuff like final fantasy tactics that's exactly what i thought yeah yeah and um advanced wars obviously like those games were games that i put hundreds of hours in i know we got war groove this year yeah, but I want Advance Wars. I, know. <laughs> I, I know. want little Andy coming out with his wrench going, dunch, dunch, yes. dunch, You can, you can dunch. get that. You just have to play Wargroove on PC and use mods. Aw. <laughs> well, hey, if you want to see all of our Game of the Year choices and the People's Award choices, head to IGN.com. They are all in the top slots of the page with really beautiful art from our art team. Super big shout out to our art team for that because they look nice. beautiful. Now, we also just learned about a ton of new indie games coming out next year, and some of, some of those games are available now. And there is a list, I think, what, 16, 16 indie games that got announced? and Either announced or talked about, yeah. yeah. Instead of going down the entire list and telling you each of them, because you can find a list of that on IGN.com, I want us to go around and each pick a game to talk about. Mm. And we'll do this two or three times, depending okay. on how long we take. Are you looking at me to start? I mean, I, you don't have to start. I can start. Okay. Okay. I will start... With Dauntless. I oh. mean, you guys hey. assume that, right? <laughs> but um, I did get to speak with the developers and with uh, one of the uh, PR representatives and see some of the new content because with the Switch launch, it is available now, came a bunch of new content and a new monster called Macarion. And it's like a big purple Weavern that deals, it's electrified and uses shock damage. And it's a really interesting fight. And they included, they added new mounting mechanics for this monster specifically and to get to this monster you have to get high enough into the level of escalation which is a new roguelike game mode that was inspired by games like slay the spire and risk of rain i I knew where this was going i could tell someone combined (laughs) slay the spire with monster hunter and casey almost exploded oh you're interested in this then yeah (laughs) okay um i played dauntless a ton when it first came out on the ps4 um earlier this year and it's now just coming to switch um i got up to heroic behemoths and then kind of fell off once i had to move on to some other games um but i'm very glad that it's down now out for switch because when i travel I can play a Monster Hunter-like game t- yep. to go, and I don't have to worry about bringing it's my also, PlayStations. It's free to download it's right free now. To, yeah, it's completely free, and it is not pay to win at all in any way, shape, or form. Like yeah. you'll get maybe some more stuff, and maybe some more um, cosmetics is a really big thing of um, how you spend your money in that game. But if you don't care about the cosmetics, it really doesn't matter that much. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a really good, awesome experience. If you like Monster Hunter, but you don't like all of the tedious systems dauntless is a really good like light version that game is also has set the bar in terms of cross play and cross platform support if you play it it's available on the epic game store on pc xbox one ps4 and switch you have the same account across all four platforms you can play with other people on any platform uh and yeah you just can move you can be playing on switch on the go or i guess if you have wi-fi Mm -hmm. on the go and then just like get onto your pc and keep pick up exactly where you were on the same account playing with people on anything so if you have friends who are already playing it somewhere else you You can can literally just start playing with them right away and I, like I mentioned, I already had an account and I logged in and was playing with my old account in like five minutes after downloading it this That's morning. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's it's honestly, it is the thing that every one of these games like this, games as a service online things, should be doing and can't do sometimes for technical reasons or can't do because it's too expensive or complicated or wouldn't get hmm. used enough, whatever the reason is. But they just said, hey, we're just going to do it. And they did it and they're doing it really well. 
Very yeah. Cool. So it's free to play. Check it out. Um, I tried it today and it was um, a little bit rough compared to like your PS4, or Xbox or PC experience. But Dauntless, uh, the Dauntless team at Phoenix Labs is constantly uh, pushing updates and fixing things and improving the uh, performance. And whenever they improve the performance for one game system, it goes across the board to all of them because they're working with the same uh, game. And for example, when I first played on the PS4, there was this one problem with this one monster and it was kind of a meme, but they fixed it. So I have faith that they will fix and make it better as time goes on as well. Pretty but cool. I think it's worth checking out. Sweet. Brian. Axiom Verge 2. Ah. Yay. Yeah. I'm just really excited that we're finally getting a Metroidvania on Switch. It's going to be the first one. <laughs> first no, one. Um, first outdoors medieval looking. No, yeah. not even. Sci fi. Medieval looking sci fi Metroidvania. Probably yeah. the first one. This is an interesting no, one. I, no. I can show you one after okay, this, fine. actually. Which, what's it called? Uh, that Time Spinner is kind yeah, of medieval I, futuristic. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah. See, yeah. I was trying to, like, <laughs> Wait, what? trying to make the category tight enough. <laughs> you guys thought I was kidding, too? No. I could see that? No. Yeah. No. Well, the joke is that there are 500 different Metrovanias <laughs> on Switch, and that you'll find one that falls in every category in art, an art style and almost genre. Um, the, uh, Axiom Verge is a really fascinating one person entirely developed this game. It's it's completely evocative of the original Metroid. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like straight up a a gritty dystopian NES game in widescreen on Switch. You can play it there, it's great. And the sequel looks like it's taking some pretty big creative liberties in terms of distancing itself from the original. It's not necessarily 16-bit. It's sort of- yeah, More color, definitely, than yeah. the 8-bit eight eight look, yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure how to categorize. We used to it put everything into different bit boxes back in the day, and I don't really yeah. know how, where to put this one. Um, but I'm happy that this game's getting a sequel. 9-bit. 9-bit, 12-bit, yes. maybe, no. 14. Nine bit. Um, well, it's because none of that okay. exists anymore. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't exist yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, but I, I believe this game is being entirely developed by one person again, which is really cool. And uh, it comes out in a year. So fall twenty twenty. Yeah, mm -hmm. there'll really? be somewhere between a hundred and six hundred Metroidvania games released between now and then to hold us over. But uh, I'm excited to play this one again. Check out the first one if you haven't yet. Yeah. Well, I have to watch out that I don't pick like a artsy little bow tie game. Um, away I mean, you're from you're gonna pick murder yeah. by numbers, right? I totally. This is an not indie showcase. Pick this is this is bow tie the show. You thought I was gonna pick murder by numbers, but I gotta pick sports story. What? I knew you were gonna do that. But Picross. Is that the one you were you <laughs> no, were looking no, no, at? No, okay, good, gonna, good. I wanted you to do it. Okay, yeah. I didn't want to take it. Uh, well, it's golf story too. So yeah. if you haven't played golf story, it kind of is a throwback to. Um, to these games you never you you haven't played in a long time, but like the 16-bit age of like games like Harvest Moon mixed with another other genre. There was one um, I think it was Marvelous who made it, uh, Legend of the River King. It was called Nushitsuri. This franchise that was basically a role-playing game, but at the center of it was fishing. <laughs> and like I fell in love with that game, played it in Japanese back in like 1990 <laughs> something. And so <laughs> when I played Golf Story, it was almost like a return to that, where you had this kind of traditional looking RPG with lots of talky talky, and then like some sort of central gameplay element, in this case, golf. I really like that game. Like many people, I never finished it because you kind of after a while you feel like you're doing the same thing, and this golf wasn't so great. Um this one, Sports Story, they announced for a middle next year, 2020, and it does, it's not just golf. It has all these other sports types in it, like, you know, you've got a little soccer and uh, what was it, baseball. Soccer, and baseball, There's fishing volleyball. in it. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm, you know, it's basically a 16-bit sports RPG. So you have, like, actual kind of sports game elements. And I, I actually think, you know, the 16-bit age was really get, great for sports and especially golf, too, because, like, it kind of refined the mechanics of hitting the ball at the right time and with the right angle and stuff and um you know a role-playing game on top of it and the writing was really fun in the original too yeah, so the writing is really good yeah really looking forward to it they the vo said two things during this announcement during the showcase one was the sport a decathon is what yeah. you're in so i'm assuming that means there's 10, ten. sports uh, but the other thing it said was it's more than just sports it's also going to have like dungeons and espionage and it's it sounds really of course, weird. the world of sports, and that's exactly what, like you said, that's exactly what the original game needed, right? Was something to sort of shake it up as you got into the later hours of it, and this is this sounds like they're just answering that exact question. Yeah, cool. it's I, I mean I'm not kidding, like that is 
right at the top of my list right now for for top anticipated games for next year. Wow. Until they announce Zelda 2 and yeah. Mario Universe and all that stuff. It's also know. just really cool. Luigi's Hotel <laughs> Chain <laughs> 4. It's just really cool to see a total indie game that is was Switch exclusive and has not gone to any platforms other, any other platforms getting a sequel. Yeah. Like that's just we, like great. You don't see that very often. Mm-hmm. You, usually these games eventually make it to PC or other platforms or they just sort of release and then that's it. And this is just like I, I just like that this is a success story for this studio. Yeah. So, yeah, that kicks ass. So if that's not your game, what would what is your, your game, game be? Um I'm going to be weird here. Okay. Ah, uh, I mean what? totally unexpected. Okay. Uh, I'm going to honestly say Talos Principle. Okay. The Talos Principle That's Deluxe a Edition one. is a uh, first-person puzzle game that came out a while ago on other platforms, but it's out now Does on Crow Switch. Does Crow Team made it, right? Yes, yeah. Crow Team made mm-hmm. it. Um, and it's one of my favorite first-person puzzle games oh. pretty much ever. Like, like, Is it Witness-like? Or uh, it is. Mistish? It is. I was going to say misty, but I like where you went with that. Mistish. Mistish. Yeah, no, Mystic? it's it's closer to something like Portal or The Witness, okay. where it is very kind of uh, structured puzzles. Okay. But then when you leave these sort of puzzle areas, you are walking around this large space and exploring and finding all these audio logs, and it's just like a really weird, pretty game. Very cool story. Really clever puzzles. Um, it's just one that any sort of puzzle fans should absolutely check out. And this comes with the DLC that they released in the Deluxe Edition, so that's very, very cool. Uh, there were a couple announcements like that, like the other, like Oddworld Stranger's Wrath is just another game that's just like, hey, this is a good game that's just out on Switch. That's and it's the like, first-person cool. shooter one, right? Like with the uh, burly stranger guy. Yeah, it's, it's a, a yeah, yeah. first-person, basically Western, Western shooter, game, but yeah. in the Oddworld universe. There were Super Mash looked cool, where you mash like it different genres. Really oh, man, yeah. yeah. I thought Super Mash looked awesome, but- and I also... Really like Skatebird. I can't wait. Looks adorable. I (laughs) it had a bird with headphones, so that obviously sells me right there. I I never thought that we would see the day where the 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 bird genre or the skating (laughs) genre would be dead. Bird genre is doing great. You can thank Goose Game for this. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. and that like of all of all birds, that this bird would bring it back, and not the hawk himself, Mister Tony. I see. That's funny. (laughs) Uh, Murder by the numbers. (laughs) Murder by numbers. You brought up. That's of course a mix of basically Phoenix Wright and Picross, which sounds glorious, and it's the composer Mm -hmm. of the Phoenix Wright music is on board too. And it's from the Hatful Boyfriend developer, which is which is uh, about. Dating birds. Weird thing. There was also Boyfriend Dungeon, which is another mashup, like Dating Gym. Uh, well, da- I'm dating sim very excited about Boyfriend Dungeon. Dungeon. That's you, a terrifying title. You find weapons Boyfriend. and then you date them. Yeah. Okay. But you they like, they turn into people. It's an actual dungeon crawler, and then you date your weapons <laughs> in between the dungeons. You can also um, have a, a a single relationship and just have a cat, if that's your if that's what you prefer. Yes, those are weird options. <laughs> I love, data I, sword or data cat. I love these you don't, Nintendo. You don't date your cat. You're just single, and then you have a nice single existence with your cat. Have you finished the game? I don't know if we can. Rule it's out not out yet. Not it's not out yet. That <laughs> you could know be an what? option. Who could know? Who could know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a funny. It was a funny indie indie world showcase because there was a ton of games, and they all look really cool, but. Mm-hmm. About half of them we knew about, maybe not on Switch specifically, and we didn't get many real hard dates. We just got a lot of release windows in mm-hmm. 2020. It just sort of set the stage for next year. It's like, oh, yeah, there's still a lot of cool stuff coming out next yeah. year. Hey, Casey, before you go on, why does your Switch have a blue... Oh, t- oh, blue hair. Is it blue tape? <laughs> or did you color it? So, oh! Yeah, my the Switch is in a bad shape. Um, so both of the Switches, the one, the IGN one that I have and what, the one I bought myself, <laughs> has hairline fractures on the back plate. Because it's oh. bursting with games. And this one, <laughs> I it fell, yeah, from, right, it fell from my couch onto the carpet. Okay, so user error. But it's, it's a, it already had a hairline fracture and the mm-hmm. carpet impact caused the hairline fracture to actually be a problem. <laughs> it's no okay, see, I have five fracture. switches. None of them are broken. I don't, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing either. I'm so confused. And both of them, like I said, both of them have the little cracks, and I don't know why. Do you like how are you using it differently from the other children? Like, no, I don't. I really, I don't understand. I really don't know. Okay. Um, 
But yeah, and I, uh, they don't sell official backplates, and I have no idea how I'm going to fix this. Oh, I bet there you can definitely get uh, alternate backplates. You get a third party we, one. Yeah, can, it has to be a third party it. one. Yeah. But it is fixable. I just need a backplate. There's some cool see through ones. Yeah. Didn't we get like a whole. I, I might have an extra one. I'll check. Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. We I would love it. to fix it. And the this back is plate real is, time, people. This the is back not plate a is, easy, is easy to fix because you don't have to disconnect. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, the backplate isn't attached yep. to anything. It's yep, just yep. it's just a piece of All right. thing. I thought anyway. you had like a custom mod or something. Oh, yeah. The custom duct tape mod. It's just duct tape. Thanks, Casey. Oh, no. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. With news. Hey. Hi. So speaking of uh, switches and apparatuses, and maybe it would cover my terribly damaged switch, you have a nice box in front of you, Brian. That's right. Please right here, uh, I have the Satisfy 2019 Limited Edition Grip. And we've talked about Satisfy before on the show. They make a really cool product called the Switch Grip or the Satisfy Grip, which you can place your switch into, which essentially gives uh, your switch a lot more sort of weight and heft. Heft, yeah, it puts big handles on the side and a thing on the back that makes it feel a lot more kind of comfortable. It makes it feel sort of like a gigantic Xbox controller or something yeah. with mm -hmm. the asymmetrical sticks. It and Satisfy sent over their newest version, which is the 2019 limited edition. Uh, this goes for, I believe, $67. Yep. And uh, it comes with a big case. Whoa. Which a you can blue use. case. And it does, it makes your switch significantly more comfortable to the point where the one that I brought home, my fiance and I fight over it. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm getting him for Christmas. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and so the Don't case listen. has uh, tons of room for uh, games, <laughs> and I think you can fit twenty, yeah, twenty games in here. Uh, the Whoa. grip itself is awesome. It's a, it's sort of a bluish color with uh, black handles on the back, and it comes with these things that Tom and I couldn't really figure out. They are, oh, um, they're, they're rails. They're to put your. Uh, extra Joy-Con on so they don't get lost. Oh, I get it. That's so what I thought. What's funny about this, sure. and if you're watching the video, I'm actually terrified to do this. No, no, no you're fine. I don't you're good. It. Don't, it, you you're lying fractures. You can take one of these rails and you can make, uh, let's see. Hopefully, If I you put it the, uh, the wrong way around, it'll be forever on it. Yes. <laughs> no, you can make uh, the world's weirdest little switch controller, <laughs> which is... <laughs> Very beautiful. Um, so and so, cute. yeah, this case is huge. It's got room for all the stuff. It also comes with uh, little caps that you can use on top of the joysticks to give them a little more grip. And I don't know, what, some uh, other magical stuff see. is in there. There's a, yeah, the thumb, thumb pads, um, controller rails, yep. USB. -A. It comes with a USB A to USB C cable. Yeah. And what I like about this is that it's um, tilted. So, instead of like dangling straight down while you're charging your switch grip or your switch, um, it's kind of off to the side, so you won't have that cable hanging there. Um, Satisfy has been making really cool products for a while now. We've covered them on the show before. They make one for the Switch Lite also, which to me was a little interesting because it, it it definitely makes the size of that thing bigger. But again, if you're mostly playing in handheld mode, which on Switch Lite you mm -hmm. have to, <clears throat> uh, and you want something a little more comfortable, I, I really dig what these guys are doing. So this is the Switch nice. Grip Pro. Um, it's got a little more, we've talked about it before, but essentially the Switch hovers a little bit better inside of it, so there's a little more breathability, and it doesn't scratch up the sides kind of like the original one did here and there. Um, so yeah, so Casey, enjoy. Merry Christmas. Well, Thank Brian, you. now to for the important part. Uh, folks, if you place your order right now at the 1-800 number <laughs> below, we will throw in an extra gift just for the next 20 minutes. You get your own, your very own kit to make a macrame owl. So place your orders right now. <laughs> this, seemed like, this seemed like a QVC special. Oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, well... well well, just to this clarify, is, this is they, they sent this to us, but this is just no, like no, you guys actually just like this. Yeah, yeah this no. is I'm just kidding. This <laughs> yeah. is not a sponsored segment. Yeah, yeah no. Um, this is one of those things that it's like we really like them. We've championed them on yeah. the show before. They're a small team. They're a small company. Um, and anytime anyone sort of is like, what what are ex what accessories should I get for Switch? I always tell them get like a good carrying case, get a good screen protector. Um, and get a switch grip. I really like that case. It's it's super nice. I yeah. honestly, I I hate playing my switch in bed without the switch grip now. Okay, like it just is so uncomfortable without it. Like there's I got actually, to be like, a better way. <laughs> I know this sounds so bad, but honestly, no. like I I didn't think I needed it until I brought one home and and used it for a while, and now I just don't want to play without it which is why i'm buying another one so that we don't have to fight over it no it's yeah. it's like it's honestly for me I'm, I'm in the same way it's it's one of those things where uh you don't really realize how important it is until you use one for a while and for some people who just want like a portable system that they can throw in their pocket obviously this is not going to be for you but if you play handheld mode a lot while you're watching tv at home uh switch grip pro check it out nice 
So, also next in news is finally the final update to Shovel Knight tre Treasure Trove. Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Um, did you get the new Amiibo? Pair. It's on the way. It's on the way. Yeah. But my, not here yet. My order was delayed. A Wait, which bit. one? The gold one, and then there's the three, the three pack that's, that's been actually, delayed for 19 years. Those are actually that? coming out. They're yeah. coming. The gold they're, one they're is. Ready. Uh, yeah, uh, both of them are on the way now. I saw. Yeah. I saw those at. It, it was literally Pax West 2017 behind yep. a glass case. It's so strange. They're finally. Wow. It's so strange that they exist. Um, but I'll I, take it. I, I gave a gift to myself this morning by remembering that I bought. Uh, treasure trove at the switch launch and forgot that that is just this like fun box that keeps getting updated yep. Yep. and so i had the king of cards and uh shovel knight showdown just downloaded for free basically this morning and that could be you too if you also bought treasure trove and uh shovel knight showdown is kind it's of got to be a better way <laughs> it's kind of like <laughs> should, I, should, I, should, I, should i should i switch departments guys <laughs> um <laughs> shovel knight showdown is um kind of smash brosy uh like brawler fighter and king of cards is the final story right yeah. yeah, I think the f the fourth one, fourth and final expansion in this, at least for now or whatever. Which yeah. I thought was just like a bow tie card why, game. Why we gotta say use bow tie as a derogatory <laughs> word here? It's just it's a positive I'm starting word. to take it. A, a it's personal. a term of endearment. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh, yes, it is uh, <laughs> I'm the sorry, fourth and final game. It's okay. Starring King Knight, uh, just like the other ones were like Plague Knight and uh, Specter Knight, and then originally Shovel Knight. Um, and we gave it, uh, we reviewed King of Cards. We didn't review Shovel Knight Showdown, but we reviewed King of Cards and Mitchell Saltzman gave it an 8.5. Um, I played a bit of it and I had kind of similar thoughts to him. The funny thing is we went into it expecting very different things. He thought it was just a Shovel Knight campaign and I thought it was just a card game based in the Shovel Knight universe. And the answer is it's actually sort of a mix. It is, if you just like Shovel Knight for the Shovel Knighting, it is that, right? It is one of the longest Shovel Knight campaigns they've made to date. Wow. Mitchell says it's really fun. He really likes King Knight's kind of unique mechanics. But then also in the middle of that, there's this kind of Final Fantasy VIII triple triad style card game that you can play to get these things called merit medals, which you then use to upgrade some of your powers. That sounds cool. Uh, so, and the the card game is, Mitchell and I kind of came to a certain, sort of agreed, the card game is good. But it feels very, like, toothpaste and peanut butter sort of weird combo of, like, these don't really, like, neither are bad on their own, but they are just sort of weird to be forced together. Like, the way he, I described it was, like, uh, and, and then Mitchell used in his review is, like, it's as if in The Witcher 3... If you hit like a level cap, this is what he was saying, is if you hit a level cap in The Witcher 3 and the only way to break through that level cap was to play Gwent. <laughs> and it's like, okay, like Gwent's fun, but this right. is kind of weird that, that like you're a making good time me to do me. it. <laughs> right, and that might appeal to some people. And right. at that point, the card game is completely optional within uh, King Cards. It's just if you want to get super, like much stronger, you have to play it. And so it's this sort of weird thing, but none of it is bad, right? It's still Shovel Knight, and those guys do not make bad games, evidently, mm -hmm. and it's still really, really fun, and probably Shovel Knight fans will still get a real real good kick out of it. All right, moving on. Uh, we There's some rumor that MLB The Show could be coming to Nintendo in the future. Um, I don't know a whole lot about this. I know Logan Plant, our production assistant, added this, but um, MLB and Sony made a multi-year deal and maybe multi-platform as soon as 2021. And Nintendo of America subtweeted the announcement with a baseball emoji. Yeah, uh, Xbox did as well. This is mm -hmm. pretty big news because this is historically a uh, PlayStation-owned studio or a Sony-owned studio that has been making PlayStation-exclusive games for a long time. But the walls around what the word, word exclusive means are, are starting to crumble across the entire industry, which is a great thing for gamers. This could be, right, the MLB basically saying... Yes, we want to re-up a licensing deal, but we don't want our games to be confined to one mm -hmm. platform. Right. right. That's you had to go to the PlayStation to play, you know, ML, MLB games like this. But. Yeah, and so on on the PlayStation side, uh, we've seen like with PlayStation now this year the walls getting torn down mm -hmm. a little bit with uh, stuff like God of War ending up on PC being playable there. Um, but in terms of them making games that will appear on other like competitors' hardware, yeah, that's pretty much never happened before. Yeah. And but, it's exciting. Yeah, it's very yeah. exciting. Yeah, I mean, we're starting to see it with Xbox a lot, right? We've gotten a bunch of, like, uh, once-exclusive Xbox darlings have popped up on Switch. Mm -hmm. And so I think that maybe this would have been a thing where we'd be theorizing about, but the fact that Nintendo 
that their official Twitter account like quote tweeted this announcement with a, a baseball emoji shows that like this game will definitely come to Switch. Ken Griffey is back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, Remember speaking that? of sports, if you're into fitness, uh, Ring Fit Adventure Play Experience is coming to malls in the U.S. from December 13th to the 29th. It's only a couple of them, but if you're interested in playing Ring Fit Adventure, you can go to Arrowhead Town Center in Glendale, Arizona, Memorial City Mall in Houston, Texas, Mall of America in Bloomington, Minnesota, Los Cerritos Center in Cerritos, California, Tyson's Corner Center, Tyson's, Virginia, and Aventura Mall in Miami, Florida. Um, so yeah, you can Where, go check out Ring Fit Adventure. Where's Cerritos? I don't know. Is that East Bay? No, that's El Cerritos. Sorry. El Cerritos. Yeah, that's a, it's. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I'm gonna I've, look it up. I've lived in California so, for over ten years, and every week somebody names a place here that I didn't know existed. Sorry, well. Cerritoans. We're also, looking it up. Yeah. But hey, uh, that's it. That's all the news for that. Um, but Reggie will appear at the Game Awards this year. L.A. County. Thank you very much, Mr. Borba. <laughs> Reggie that's why, will be that's why we awards. don't know. We're in North California. We have no yeah, clue. We have no idea. But yeah, Reggie will be at the Game Awards. Uh, Jeff Keeley tweeted that Reggie will be a presenter, and Reggie tweeted, my body is ready. I don't he, know what he'll be presenting. He but apparently has never missed a Game Awards before. Wow. Or, you know, in, in some capacity presented something. Um, but what's interesting about this is that Reggie is no longer directly affiliated with Nintendo. But he can probably still come out and unveil the release date for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 and Link's Awakening 2. There's no way yeah. they would I'm use kidding. him as a <laughs> spokesperson. Yeah, no. That would be great, though. Frankly, but. I'm mad about it. What? I just want him to sit down and retire. I'm totally kidding. This is a joke. Everyone's <laughs> so mad at me. God, Tom is so sassy today. <laughs> wow. wow. Tom has never uh, been mad at anything. That should have tipped you off. Gosh. You're wearing the smart glass smart uh, boy glasses yeah, and you didn't notice. Boy glasses. Yeah. <laughs> well, he got me. He tripped yeah. me. So I'm, there's just... a dumb man under these glasses. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's the big secret. Oh, gosh. That is just about it for news. Um, now on to games out this week. Tom, is there anything that jumps out to you? Uh, the main things that jumped out to me were Ashen. Mm-hmm. Ashen is coming out, uh, or I think just came out for its $40 on the eShop. Uh, this was a... It's so easy to say Dark Souls inspired Dark Souls like, but this was a game that kind of takes after that, except with some town building elements to it. You can you have a sort of home base that you advance as you go. Uh, this was a really cool game that kind of went under the radar a little bit this year, or this year or last year. I can't remember mm-hmm. now. Um, but it's it's a neat one, Ashen. You should check it out. Uh, we don't. I haven't played it on Switch, so I don't know. I can't speak to performance, which is always a question with games like this, but. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a definitely a cool one. There's some other cool things. Call of Juarez Gunslinger is oh, yeah. out. That's a that's a port from 2013, I think. Oh like the only competitive competitor to Red Dead back Kinda. in the day. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. This uh, that was one of those franchises where it was a thing for a while until it wasn't. Yep. There's also a, a really cool steampunk shooter called uh, Jamestown that has an older game, but Jamestown is finally out on Switch and and is another neat one for people who like shmups. I, I still don't know how I feel about that word. But, uh, <laughs> Me too. Yeah, it's loaded. Up. We are running slightly short on time because we actually have to be out of the studio in 10 minutes. Oh, um, for, for Podcast Beyond? I, yes. Oh, I'm on that. We can wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dornbush. Well, guys, what are you guys playing? Uh, I started playing The Tourist. Oh. which I feel like we all kind of collectively slept on. I think the entire industry did. This was one of those like sort of nindy darlings, uh, very kind of colorful, voxel artwork that uh, this, this game just kind of quietly released uh, earlier, yeah. uh, a couple weeks ago. And I feel like everybody just sort of skipped it. I don't know what happened there. I actually went through my inbox. I couldn't even find like a press release or anything. Um, and I really dig it. It's it's uh, uh, Shinin, right? The yeah, German team. Yeah, which it's like they are they are an technically uh, amazing. Yes, which I'm uh, the the file size for this game was like obnoxiously small, and it's like one of the prettiest <laughs> looking games on Switch. Huh. I saw Digital Foundry did a breakdown of it, and it, they called it like one of the sort of more beautiful technical games on Switch. It's got a lot of sort of similar DNA to the Link's Awakening remake in mm. terms of um, setting and also like your mysterious island. I mean, you're wearing a party shirt and not a tunic, which is a little bit different. <laughs> but um, it's even got that sort of like, you know, distance blur effect, which is done in this game without 
uh, crashing the frame rate constantly, <laughs> which I dig. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it's sort of it, it's sort of like this like whimsical adventure game with uh, some mild puzzle and combat elements. It's about six hours long, uh, yeah. and I'm probably about halfway through it. But I really, really like it. It's twenty bucks. It was totally under my radar until you brought it up, and a few NVC fans have, you know, tweeted it at me and mentioned it as well, and and some IGN commenters as well. Thank you for that. Uh, it looks really cool. I, I watched a video of it. I was like, this is going to be a game I'll buy over the Christmas break. Yeah, keep play. put it on your wish list. I have a feeling this is going to be one of those games that gets like either a price drop or a good like a, you know, a permanent price drop or a sale or something. There's always eShop sales over the holidays. Uh so keep an eye on that. Uh, you don't need to rush to buy it right now unless you're starved for games, which you're mm -hmm. almost certainly not. <laughs> um but yeah, The Tourist, keep an eye on it. Nice. What about you, Per? Uh, I played a lot of games on other systems for Game of the Year and all that, but I did uh, find some time in the last couple of days to finish Luigi's Mansion. Uh, finish as in have most of the collectibles, but not quite all of them. There's still booze uh, left haunting the walls of my hotel. Did you know if you're having trouble finding everything, there's a really great wiki guide. Is there a wiki? Where yeah. can there's find this? There's be a better way. Tune in to IGN.com. <laughs> okay, um, but I, I like... It's a black and white video of <laughs> hair falling off. I, I've talked about this at length, so I'm not going to bore you with with, with that, but it's, it's just such a well-made game. It's so good. Um, every level is unique, and... I just, you know, even uh, some bosses are hit and miss, but there's some really cool ones in there as well. And then when I finish the game, you know, credits run and you go back to an older save. And I just, you know, grabbed my youngest son said, hey, let's chase down booze together. And then we're playing two player co-op and it works really, really well with Mario and Guigi. Um, it's just it's a it's a wonderful game. It's about, you know, a good 20 hours of the campaign, yeah. I think, is where I clocked in. Um like if you had told me this was made by Nintendo's in-house Mario team, I would have believed it. It's just so polished and beautiful, and uh, I hope they continue with this franchise. It comes out of Canada, in case you don't you didn't know. It's not um, developed in Japan. I always see people commenting saying, "Yeah, but Nintendo uh, directed it." And it's like I think the influence from the Japan team is fairly small on that game. I think that team really is that good. Yeah. What about you, Tom? Go Canada. Uh, mm -hmm. I started playing a game this weekend that. Com I completely missed, which I'm really upset about, called Hero Land, which, for those of you who don't know, and this is going to come to as a shock to a lot of people, is the new game from the director of Mother 3. What? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I so didn't know that. Not Shigesato Itoi, that's the game designer. So the Oh, no, no, that's Mother 3, that's right. Sorry, the Itoi director? is the old one. Let me... Yeah. Let me yeah. Someone else Google this. Yeah. Brian, you Google yeah. this while I talk. Yeah, Hero Land is a new game. It was called Hero X Hero in Japan, and it just came out in the States. It is out for Switch, uh, and it's from the director of Mother 3, and it's this adorable little RPG where you are a tour guide at a heroing, adventuring amusement park, and guests come to the park and want to go on adventures to kill fake monsters hmm. and so you build a so party. like a west world yeah kind of it's basically like <laughs> west world but for for rpg heroes okay and you build a party of guests and then they fight automated like you don't do anything with them it's except on switch it's on pc it's on switch and i think okay. it's on playstation I as found well. wow. the information and yeah it includes mother three art director nobuhiro imagawa okay there you go and it's I found also it too, but she she was she was better. Yeah. So, and, and be you look way. at the characters. You like you can look at the character art, and like it, it looks like Earthbound characters, That's right? Awesome. Like, it, and the the whole idea is that you influence the game. You influence your party by like throwing healing items at them, or just maybe making suggestions about what they should do. But you are just a tour guide, and then you, they level up by getting their own experience, and then also through friendship levels. Uh, it's really adorable. It is pretty rickety, I'll say. Like the UI is just terrible mm. just really bad <laughs> and the tutorialization is really not great but the lo localization is really funny There's a lot of the okay. writing's really funny the game itself seems pretty cute and i'm excited to play more of it nice so it's the art director of mother 3 not not the specific game director okay well that's my mistake but yeah it's it's <laughs> the, the influence is clear there in that regard and this, this game only just came to steam like five days ago so yeah i i think it, i think it's on switch like a week ago so it's mm -hmm. yeah it's like really it's very very recent and it's uh it's one that i think nobody realized was a thing and now it's out and it's cool it's worth looking at interesting sweet so we i want to do question block oh okay. 
you didn't want to give us the Slay the Spire update of the week? I mean, I'm still playing Fire Emblem. I'm still playing okay. Pokemon. I'm still playing Slay the Spire. Like That's it. No news. Okay. No news there. Um, <laughs> but we do have some question block. And I got this one from Leo Wright, who wrote into MVC at IGN.com. And I missed this one last week. So the other week, we were talking about Ring Fit Adventure as a family game being nominated for the Game Awards. And we said that... It, I want to play it with other people. It's kind of like a thing I do in a room by myself and I shut the doors and hope no one looks at me. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, same. Don't look at me. But uh, Leo Wright wrote in to tell tell us that um, he and his kids, these five kids, um, and his wife, they all play together. Aww. And he says, we've had many evenings where we play Ring Fit Adventure as a family. We do the mini game mode and all of my kids love trying to beat my high scores. We each get a turn and then pass it on. I know you guys were disgusted by the idea, but is it really worse than sharing equipment with sweaty, gross strangers at the gym? <laughs> it's a uh, very, good, right. it's a super good point. And um, it's much cheaper than buying a bunch of gym memberships that you, we can all work out. Um, and he also mentioned that they all play Luigi's Mansion together and only three of them will play Smash together. Hmm. And they also had fun making Mario Maker levels uh, for each other at first, but since we, they already had... They're filled with the original, and since the multiplayer doesn't really work right, they don't play it very well or for long. Um, so with all of that in mind, um, he'd say that Ring Fit would get first place, Luigi's Mansion would get third pl uh, second place, and Smash would get third place as far as best family games wow. for the Game Awards, based th on a very large family with children. I think, Leo, your, your kids... Five. Uh, your kids are, um, are probably cute and small. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, my kids are large. No, my, my teen, uh, well, tall. You can't uh, call your kids. No, I have teenagers now. They're stinky. <laughs> That's why it's gross. He means uh, relatively speaking, they're uh, large. Actually, uh, actually, I, I, I would love to see, uh, I'd love to see if I can challenge them and get them to, uh, to play this game. Uh, they haven't shown any interest in it. Maybe that's the biggest issue. Because they, they're, I mean, they probably have great metabolism. They don't need, I don't. My son I is eat, real thin. Yeah, exercise and at all when I was young. If, like he, he just wants to every day eat like three big macs and yeah fries and, 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 right and all of that have that yeah huh? right can that be mine? i had that when i was 17 too and then it went away oh, i've never had that yeah that's really <laughs> cool though i i love it when you find a game that may not look like a family game to everyone but mm -hmm. uh, that works out and luigi's mansion two players just really fun mm -hmm. i'm also always happy to be shut up by someone who clearly has more experience and yes. knows better than me about something like yes. this. So thank you for writing yeah, in. Yeah, thank you so he has much. five more kids than you do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have yeah. a cat. Like, that, that you counts, know. Right? I'm kidding. Yeah, that, that we know. <laughs> My cat I have one count. kid and her gym membership is killing me. It's yeah. thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Yeah, personal yeah. trainers, everything. Does she no, just roll around? She's a year and a half. She, <laughs> she just rolls around sideways. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough workout for today. <laughs> and then... One more question. This one is from Ritus Titus. He says, do you think Kid Icarus should have another chance this time on the Switch? Yes. Uprising was highly underrated, in my opinion, and should have a sequel. Isn't that insane that that game has never been revitalized totally in any way? Yes. Forgot no, because Kid Icarus is bad and uh, should go away. Wait, really? You guys are easy today. It's like, I'm easy always a trick. I am always easy to trick, Tom. I always believe everyone so, i don't so, have a crazy fondness like i don't have like long-standing love for kid icarus mm. but i do think i do agree with the idea that uprising was underrated and it is fertile ground for new ideas especially in the switch it's like they could actually remove the hand cramp feature yeah if they put it on switch yep i mean that was my biggest issue honestly i didn't think it was comfortable to play and like I thought it was a, a quality title. Like they obviously put a ton of time into it, and like I just couldn't give it the attention it deserved because my hand was like I really had like it strained my hand. It's it's a weird franchise. I mean, the NES game Even was sort of an, an RPG platformer. There was a Game Boy game that was mostly just a platformer, which wasn't mm -hmm. as good. And then the the weird 3DS one, mm -hmm. which you know shipped with a giant plastic peripheral. That's right. But because of that. Uh, Pit and Palutina are in Smash, and you couldn't imagine those games without those guys or the levels. Pit. And Dark Pit, yeah. And I so, could imagine Smash without Dark Pit. I'd be happy about it, to be honest. It's, it's salty, salty, salty yeah. marks today. to do, Tom, man. I gave you a cookie I can this morning. You know what, you know what you. I want? How about that, huh? Here, I'm going to put this out in the world, because you got to take your shot. You know what I want out of the next Kid Icarus? Give it to Platinum. Give Platinum Kid Icarus. No. Make it a crazy, wild action game where you're killing demons that as an angel. could be cool. The last one already was that. They yeah. did that already. But did Platinum do it? No. Okay. Those guys are kind there of... There must be a better way. Happen. It sounds good. 
I bet they're not done with it. It's but I always say that about F-Zero, too. And Captain Falcon's been hanging out in Smash games and not getting the new game either. Yeah, right? Yeah. Get Sega. Call them up. Make another hard, uh, impossible. Amusement game. Vision is long gone. I agree. <laughs> uh, how about t- Turn 10, though? Got to be a better yeah. way. Huh? Well, hey. Pear, Tom, Brian, thank you so much for joining me on Nintendo Voice Chat today. This is going to be my last episode for the year. <gasps> oh, I know. I thought you scared me there for a second. <laughs> I know. My last episode, I have scared multiple people with that this week, mm-hmm. saying this why? is my last day in the office until January. Okay, but <laughs> why? This has been an extremely gullible hour, hour of <laughs> <Yeah>. my life. <laughs> um, I, well, I'm going back to Florida for the holidays, oh. but my friend is getting married this Saturday, so I'm just going to I'm just gonna stay Go early, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you oh. make some nice turnips. Yeah, turnips. Go, uh, go, get, go get some public subs. I will absolutely get holiday edition public subs. They are my favorite public subs do, to do, get. What do they put? Do they have a, I'm so excited. Do they have a turnip? One? No, it's um, it's their everything bread with turkey and uh, bacon like with um, cranberry orange chutney turnips. and mayo, that and it is my favorite. Sounds very pub good. sub. Okay. And I'm very excited to go and eat pub sub. Send, send us a picture. Uh, we'll will. tweet it out to the okay. Nintendo Bring back some sandwiches for the I can't bring back sandwiches. They'll be it's bad. Illegal. Not with that Just attitude. do it anyway. We can take yeah. pictures of them and make fun of them and stuff. Yeah. Don't make fun of my pub subs. Anyway. I'm going to make fun of a month old sandwich. <laughs> what happened in the last two minutes? There's got episode. to be a... Oh, there's history here, Tom. <laughs> turnips anyway thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it you can catch nbc every thursday at 3 p.m but in this case it's going up early on wednesday at 3 p.m happy early holiday season yay uh thank you for watching casey since it's your last episode of the year i just want to say thank you on behalf yes. of the audience and the staff for being so awesome on the show this year thank you so much brian I it really was a busy it. year for you and you still uh, made time to seriously uh, keep the show most going, of the time so. i try thank you no thank, thank you, you guys yeah. it's been super fun Aww. I guess we'll do some train wreck of an episode without you next. No, oh, yeah. it'll oh, be it's great. <laughs> I, I'm leaving. I'm leaving the show no in the capable hands of my co-host. It'll be fine. Just keep keep tuned in. It'll be great. It'll be wonderful. Maybe even a surprise on the week of Christmas. So you should Ooh. definitely tune in that week. But uh, yeah. What? Thank you so much for watching. And remember, this is the only place you can get the thing. The thing. <laughs>